Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. It's a great pleasure and an honor to welcome MJ Pangman to the show today. MJ Pangman is an author, a speaker, and a freelance writer in the field of complementary medicine. She is the co-author with Melanie Evans of a book called Dancing with Water, The New Science of Water, A Guide to Naturally Treating, Structuring, Enhancing, and Revitalizing Your Water. And since the year 2000, and I suspect before that, she observed the powerful effects on water with her own body and has done a massive amount of research on the subject of structured water. During 2003 and 2004, she worked with the Korean scientist, Dr. Mushik Jean, to summarize his 40 years of research on the molecular structure of water and helped to make his book, The Water Puzzle and the Hexagonal Key. And she also published her own book, Hexagonal Water, The Ultimate Solution, documenting the emerging science in favor of the biological significance of structured water. She got her master's in plant science, and when I asked her about her credentials, she insists she's a layperson. She puts through a quite interesting synthesis of the natural sciences in her understanding of chemistry, biology, and quantum physics. Her ability to explain the complex and simple terms makes her writing very unique and enjoyable to read. In the many segments that I've done on water, this one really puts it all together quite beautifully. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MJ Pangman to its rainmaking time. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you for this book. In my first radio show of its rainmaking time, when I went from television to radio, I invited international dowser Bill Cox and learned a lot about primary water and then did a show with five scientists later that year on water and learned about the spin of water. And also learned that water had memory, which meant to me that water has consciousness. That was so remarkable. And then when I learned that you can remove contaminants from the water, but the water retains the memory of the frequency of those contaminants, that blew my mind. And then finally, when I read your book, Dancing with Water, The New Science of Water, it completes and adds a whole other paradigm about water and structuring water. And there's so much I want to talk to you about today. So I'm excited about this subject, as you can tell. (laughs) Very good. I'm glad that people are getting excited about water. The first revelation I had is that energized water is hydrogenated water, and hydrated water is hydrogenated water, water containing large amounts of hydrogen. Now, I'm bringing the synthesis in after reading your book. Is that true? And if it's true, what does this mean to us? That is a huge question. I only asked the small ones first. (laughs) (laughs) Well, first of all, structured water. This is the water that we're talking about. And, you know, I guess we have to give a little bit of background to your audience first. The book is about creating a liquid crystal out of water. Water's natural, beautiful form is that of a liquid crystal. It's very organized. It has a pattern that repeats geometrically, which explains why water has memory, which explains why water is the basis and the foundation for life. Water transmits information. It carries signals, and it's able to store information. This is the memory of water. Structured water is water that's in this form, that's able now to go beyond what most of us experience when we allow water to come out of the tap. Water that's structured has the capacity to carry more hydrogen and more oxygen. And hydrogen is what hydration is all about. That's why it's called hydration. It's because we're really getting hydrogen into the body. One of the things we talk about in the book is Dr. Albert St. Georgii's work where he exposed the fact that it's hydrogen that is the source of energy in the human body. We think about food, we think about calories, we think about ATP, but it's hydrogen that is ultimately the source of energy in the human body. So when you structure water, yes, you make hydrogen more available, and hydrogen really is the key, and I hope that answers your question. 
I read Dr. Batman G's books on your body's many cries for water and about the whole realm of hydration. And I think that a lot of people then started to drink more water. But then you have to get into how do you purify the water? And then once you purify it, how do you make it more vital to us? Now, you immediately in the book brought in Victor Schoberger's work about implosion. And I really would like you to talk about what that is and why that's relevant to making water vital to us. Well, Victor Schauberger was this amazing naturalist, scientist without scientific training. And, you know, I say that, but that's not really true because he got his training from Mother Nature, and that's the true science of life. And so Victor Schauberger was this very astute naturalist who brought wonderful information to us. Some of it, only some of it, has been preserved because much of his work was destroyed. But he helps us to understand a very general concept about energy in the world, and he speaks about two forms of energy. Implosion. If you can imagine the word im as energy coming in, energy being drawn together to a central place, versus explosion which is throwing energy outward like a bomb that explodes or a combustion engine which works the same way. These are the two ways that nature uses and plays with energy. One is a gathering, that's implosion, it's a gathering of energy. And gathering happens with spiral movement. This is one of the things Victor taught us. When anything moves in a spiral, it can either be throwing energy out We talk about that in terms of a washing machine, that when the water spins out, when you kind of dry those clothes out, you can spin that energy outwards in an explosive fashion, or you can gather it inwards in an implosive fashion. So what we're all about here is with uh, spiral movement, gathering that energy in, in an implosive form. That's what nature does. Nature does this in galaxies. Nature does this in the spiral of your DNA. It's gathering energy. And, you know, one of the interesting things that we discovered in the research of the book was that whenever there's a vortex created, whether that's the vortex that's created when an electron spins or when a galaxy spins, gathering that opening that happens in the vortex gathers cosmic frequencies, gathers frequencies from the universe that support life. So there's so much more going on here when water moves than we've ever looked at before. One of the things you talked about regarding Victor Schober, too, is that, and you're going to have to say this correctly, but my understanding is that when water moves through pipes, it becomes stale and stagnant. And the life-giving energy, implosion spirals or implosion vortices cannot form. Is that true or is that not true? Well, that's true to a great extent. depends on the nature of the pipes. But generally speaking, one of the things that Victor discovered in his work was that when water goes through straight pipes, there is a huge amount of resistance that is experienced by the water. He also discovered that when you allowed water to spiral through an enclosure, so he created spiraling pipes, if you will. I mean, there were still pipes, but they allowed the water to naturally curl inward, which is what water does. Every time water hits a rock, it curls, you know. It creates this little tiny miniature wave, and it curls inward. This is water's natural way, but in a straight pipe, water's not allowed to do that, and so it experiences a great amount of resistance. When water is allowed to go through spiraling pipes, the resistance diminishes until they could measure no resistance at all. Almost a negative resistance happened. If we were savvy enough to create those kind of distribution systems as we distributed water to everyone, it would require much less pressure and it would not disrupt the electromagnetic field around water. Essentially what happens when water is forced through a straight pipe is that all of its energy gets stripped away from it and left in the pipe. That's hard to kind of comprehend, but you can almost feel that as you hear it described. Going through this with all this resistance, you're stripping the energy away. And water naturally as she moves is always giving and taking. 
Kim, this is one of the themes in the book. We talk about balance. We talk about the yin and the yang of life and nature. And water is always giving and always taking. It's always this balance. 